Hey guys, my name's John Hunter, and uh, with Custom Animated Intros uh, CAI, I wanted to go ahead and take the time to throw out a uh, tutorial video on aerial motion tracking. Uh, I know when I started looking for this, there wasn't a lot out there about it, still not a lot of detailed instruction about it, so I wanted to go ahead and push this out to you guys in the hopes that it's going to make somebody's work you know, their workload a little bit easier. So uh, with that said, uh, I'll be pausing, you know, when I start to uh, render previews or when I start doing the motion tracking. So it'll pretty much be instantaneous for you guys. I want to keep this tutorial as uh, small as possible, all right? Let's go ahead and get started. Uh, in your comp, I've already got my uh, clip in here that I want to track uh, right here, just kind of, running through it real quick. I know it's not smooth. I haven't pre previewed anything yet. Now, first thing you want to do uh, on your main clip, you want to go ahead and hit control plus D and that will actually uh, duplicate the clip. I always like to lock my first one, uh, highlight the clip that you actually want to apply the motion tracking to uh, the new clip. And you got to understand when you're motion tracking through Mocha AE, it comes bundled with uh, After Effects. Uh, I think pretty much since 2008. Uh, so if you've got any version of After Effects, um, you know, CC since 2008, it should come bundled with it. Okay, first thing you need to know, uh, wherever you have your uh, cursor at, whatever point in the timeline, that's where the tracking is going to start. When you come out of Mocha uh, and you apply the mask, and when you're working, that's where it's going to, you know, apply your effects. Start your your tracking unless you select otherwise. So, with that said, go ahead and move to where you want to start. You always want to leave a little bit of lead time in it. Also, if you want to track in Mocha, you won't always want to have it on full quality preview okay so with that said we'll go ahead and uh, select the clip we've moved our our scroll bar to the uh, point in the timeline where we want to start I'll come up here to effects from the drop down menu I'll choose effect mine is listed under Boris, Boris effects mocha I'll choose mocha AE okay uh, obviously it just pops up. We don't really want to mess with any of the drop downs. We want to go ahead and select Mocha. Click once. It takes a little bit to open. Once it's open, you see that uh, right here, that is where I'm at in the timeline. First thing I want to do is set my endpoint right there. Now I'm going to scroll through this a little bit. And I will take it probably right over here because what I want to do is be able to see the full property and there will be some difficulty because the house actually is going to run along this edge, but I'm going to set that as my out point and I'm going to go ahead and I'm not going to scale this up for the full view of uh, my screen right now. I, I actually want to see my full clip and versus, you know, how, how much clip I've got and how much I'm actually tracking in. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to select a midpoint in the clip right here. Now, I use a lot of hotkeys, so you got to know that to zoom into my screen, okay, I hold down the Z key. You see how the icon changed to uh, magnifying glass? You push in to zoom in, out to zoom out with the Z key press. That's about as easy as it gets right there. Uh, if you hold down X, you get the hand tool. You know, where generally in After Effects, it's the uh, space bar. It's the actual X to move around your uh, screen once you have it zoomed in. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to track this area right here. All the deep green grass and where we get into the building. I'm going to track the outside of the patio all the way back and back by the uh, garage and up along the uh, side of the property and across the front. So let's get this started. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and uh, select my, uh, you know, X spline and 
we will go ahead and literally start it. I'm going to zoom in to do this. Move the screen up. I'm going to start it right here on this pillar. Outside of the pillar. And as I run over, I'm actually going to kind of bring it straight over because I know these things aren't straight from having previously worked in it. I'm going to actually click at certain points. And even though it's curved, don't worry about that right now. You want to drag it up to right before the building. And on this part, if you can see, there is an out, there's a uh, little fence here. I will bring it to the just the bottom part of the fence. And I will keep dragging it up. Just follow that fence line all the way to the back of the property. And we'll zoom in there just so we can see it as best possible. Like I said, just worry about the blue line right now in your actual spline. Everything else we can change. And we will bring it to uh, the outside of the fence. And again, we're hitting X and we're dragging down. Uh, we're going to bring it right up here where uh, the crossbar meets on the fence behind the, the stone. I don't know what they call those things. Bring it to the outside here. And we'll come along the fence line to the edge of the roof line to the back patio and on this we'll take it right to the outside bring it back down and it does get a little tricky around this area but what we're going to do is we're going to line it up not with this right here and i believe that's actually a gun range that they have in the basement we're actually going to put it right here on the edge of it and then follow that uh continue to follow that line down around the outside of the columns on the uh, fence. And we'll, we'll actually select one right here just so we have an extra spline. And then we'll wrap it up by right clicking. And then we will zoom back out. Let's see, move this thing to the center where we can see them all. We'll select just one of these things by left clicking on it. And then we'll hit our control A, select them all. And we will actually pull them all to the extent so it tightens up all the edges. Okay. And just kind of run your mouse over. And you'll see that the uh, property actually extends beyond the lines. We'll fix that later. That's another option. So what we want to do right now, and I know that we're going to have a lot of areas where the tracking jumps off. But like I said, we picked a midpoint. Now we're going to go ahead and... Uh, hit this right here which is track backwards <clears throat> okay and you can see that we are on our on our single level that we just created uh i don't really mess with any of the settings down here everything generally works as is and at that point i want to go ahead and start tracking backwards now i'm going to go ahead and get this tracking and i'm going to go ahead and pause until the tracking's done so you guys don't have to sit here and watch it go frame by frame and i'll be right back Okay, guys, we are back on, and you can see that it's tracked all the way back to the first part. You can see my tracking is way off. What I'm first going to do is you see where my uh, my uh, point on the timeline is. It's tracked back to all this uh, purple, blue, whatever you want to call it. I'm going to go ahead and put a keyframe there, and I've got it set You know, by default. It comes up to the A, which is auto keyframe. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and uh, select that option, and we're actually going to see if we can't kind of move the whole thing back somewhere that is reasonable. At that point, we're going to kind of zoom into it and start moving those uh, points back. We don't have to uh, do too much. We're going to click off screen once, just, I don't know, uh, one of those uh, pet peeves, I guess. Start moving it to the... Uh, corner of the posts and we will go from this side over uh, we know we follow that fence line so hang on let me get that just a little bit closer and I want to zoom in just a little bit more and remember zoom is holding down the Z and moving is holding down the uh, X so we know that we followed the uh, patio we followed this right up to that uh, fence line, so 
move that up closer and that let's move these right back where they should be you'll have to do this every time it never works like it's supposed to well i don't i don't know if they actually intended it like this or not but uh it's never been brainless for me so let me go ahead and kind of look how this line looks looks good uh that is on the outside of those brick columns this runs up and we will drag it back here and just all we're doing is clicking and holding on to our marks and moving them back in place all around and let's get this real quick like we did that on the inside so we're just going to follow it over i know it cuts over the building we will uh, address that here in just a second and like i said this is an extreme example where we're tracking uh, and that light right there stays uh, where we're tracking a lot of areas around the house which normally you would just track the property so we're going to keep it just like this let's zoom out kind of see what it looks like okay uh now with this we've got our uh point there so it's been my experience most of the time that uh when you get your keyframe set uh very rarely does it really mess up between those keyframes i like to check that though in this case i'm actually going to delete that keyframe because we've got this other one so we'll go back to our first one and we'll go back to our second we see it now what i like to do is just kind of tap in the middle and line those up one more time to kind of help keep it on track you're going to have to do this nothing goes uh, flawlessly it always is going to lose tracking information but not anywhere close to what it used to uh, so let's move these back zoom in a little bit more And this is one of those things where, you know, it, it's going to take a little bit, but it's not going to take near what it used to. And it does absolutely make a difference in uh, presentation as far as uh, how your customer sees the product. So, and the presentation on the property. So absolutely don't overlook this option. Okay, now we're going to go track on the outside of that. So we can move that one a little bit further in. I'm going to bring this down to that edge. Right there at the top of the fence. Again, we're going back around it. And if your vision's a lot better than mine, then it's not going to be quite so hard for you guys or time consuming. And it's not really that time consuming. It's just, uh, man, I, I really hate to zoom and admit the fact that my eyes are going bad this like this. So let's bring this down to... Uh, bottom of that fence line and let's see right about there let's zoom out kind of see how it looks we'll move this one in just a little bit more and this one probably out just a little bit and let's see All right, I feel like that actually looks pretty good. Now, uh, like I said, we're gonna go between points and you'll see that in this scenario, everything kind of stayed pretty good. What we're gonna do is hit the key with the plus symbol next to it. Make sure we put a tracking key there. Come click this one. This one's off a little bit. So it's gonna take a little bit more editing and bringing it in. It is not a long process. You know, we've already done it, what, three times here? So, like I said, it gets easier every time. Bringing it in, bringing it up to the line. And let's keep on moving down the line here. Zooming in. Bring this up to the edge. Bring that up to the corner. And that's what I thought is one of these 
had gotten off kilter a little bit. That's okay, not unexpected. Okay, so we're just drag that one out in general right now. Bring this one, this one, and of course we're taking that one back up to the edge. This one, let me get it on the screen. Goes all the way to the uh, bottom and top. Same thing. And like I said, your tracking is probably not going to be uh, quite this extreme. But you know what? It always works to... Uh, Works better to see an extreme example than an example that doesn't cover anything. Okay. And let's zoom out, see where we stand. This one's a little low, a little high. Move it, pull back out. Now, because we've already actually made adjustments in this, we don't have to worry about setting a keyframe. Okay, it's already set. Uh, and at this point, because it caused so much problem in the beginning I actually still step through the keyframes that I've got I guess just to kind of make sure that everything stays in line where I can see that this one's off so I'm actually going to move the whole set right here and zoom into it probably be some minor adjustments on this one Bring it to the bottom. Following it along. Probably just a little bit further out. So it's not right up on it. Okay, and of course this one doesn't need to go in that far. This one back out. That one still looks good. This one can go a little lower. And again, like I said, these hot keys, and I'll you know repeat myself on it. The hot keys are. Uh, the Z, hold it down to zoom in. The X, hold it down to move. It's in the screen. Okay. And so there we go. I think that actually looks pretty good. All right. So we'll go to the next keyframe. Keyframe. Keyframe is following along pretty good. Uh, these are what we've already got set. Let me step between these two. Still looks pretty good. Going to add a keyframe there. And this is a pretty wide spread. So I'm going to go ahead and it looks like everything pretty much follows through smoothly right there. So going to add a keyframe. And again, just kind of step through, make sure everything's kind of following along. Add keyframes between any wide spaces. You can step through your existing keyframes like this by hitting this right arrow. When you get to the end, like I said, I'm going to go ahead and track forwards now. And uh, so I'm going to hit pause. If you want to go ahead and pause the video right here is a good spot, okay? Okay, guys, as this thing is tracking, I see it coming off. And to avoid what we did earlier, I'm actually going to stop the track. Uh, and I'm going to, you know, hit a keyframe right there. And I, I generally just hit the keyframe. I know it's going to make one when I uh, generate this anyway. But I just kind of bring want to bring this back uh, on track as much as I can to uh, prevent, you know, more edits 
uh, at the end of this. So hang on just a second. Let me uh, make these edits again. Of course, you know, click and Z to zoom. Uh, bring these up along the uh, edge of the top of the pillars. And, you know, when I was uh, actually posting this on uh, Facebook and said, hey, you know, I haven't been able to find a lot of good tutorials on this. Somebody actually called me out and said, what are you talking about? There's a lot of good tutorials on this. Uh, and there are some tutorials. I, I don't know if I would call them good or bad. I would just say that they, they were lacking in the fact that, uh, man, I wanted to know a lot more about it. And that option just wasn't available. The uh, information just wasn't on there. So depending on your need, depending on uh, what all you are going to track, okay, uh, there are a variety of different tutorials out there. I am not putting any of them down, okay. I'm just saying that I needed a little bit more for my needs. I generally, uh, you know, track a lot more detailed areas. So just a regular square pattern uh, doesn't necessarily work for me or, you know, maybe a triangular, you know, plot of land doesn't necessarily work too well for me. So I like to, uh, you know, have a tutorial that kind of steps through worst case scenario, you know, if you have a lot of tracking points. So we've gone ahead and set that. So let me go ahead at this point, uh, just because I'm here, I'm going to go ahead and move back toward the center of that point and that point, which was my last couple. And truthfully, everything looks to be on par. So I'm going to hit a uh, point there. We'll move it back a little bit further. A uh, couple of these can probably be moved a little bit, but no, maybe not. Everything still looks good. So what am I going to do? I'm going to set a tracking key right here. Going through it. Everything looks good. Going to set a tracking key. Going to go to my next tracking key and continue tracking from there. And we'll go back to pause. Okay, guys. So we're back. Um, I can see that it's actually run off. Uh, again, not near as bad as... Uh, what it had done so zooming in because this is uh, about the last step of the actual tracking there are other options that you uh, have but let's go ahead and line these up real quick okay and again let's zoom in and hey, for any of you guys that have noticed that uh, I'm a little nasally, uh, believe it or not, that's actually my normal talking voice, but also coming off of a sickness. So there's that too, okay? So hang on, let me uh, kind of take a big picture view of this across the top. We're under the roof line. Uh, we're actually going to go under the roof line considerably more. So across the tops like that. So we'll bring it through to where it essentially uh, matches that line. And a lot of this is going to be guesswork. Uh, but in the with respect to time, we're going to kind of stretch through these pretty quick. And you guys can fast forward this all you want. Line it up with the edge all the way down. Let's see, where was our next tracking point? Right here. And let's see, that one goes all the way down. Losing a little bit. So ah, that's good. We'll leave it right there. Zoom out, kind of get a picture of the whole thing. Looks good. It's already set my keyframe. Kind of go in the middle here. Uh, everything still looks good. 
set another keyframe. And uh, back here, I notice there's a wide area. There we go. Everything looks good there. Tracking key right between here. Now that's one thing I miss is where I click. I'm always a little shy of uh, the center tracking key here. Everything looks good still. Go ahead, go ahead and hit a tracking key here. Tracking key here. Tracking key. Now, this button up here actually saves your current project, so go ahead and save that. And we're actually going to hit the arbitrary exit up here and close it out since we've saved it. Highlight, do not move your uh, deal. When we go into Mocha where it says Matt, all we're going to hit is uh, create AE masks. It takes a little bit for it to come up. When it does, go ahead and highlight down here on your uh, clip and hit U. And that way you'll see all the tracking keys for that area. Now, we'll go ahead and run this up a little bit right here. Now, don't move your uh, guide because at this point, we're also going to go ahead and add, um, let's see, I believe it's effect generate stroke. Okay. And on this, we're just going to hit a start. And then you can highlight this again, hit U uh, twice, and it comes down. There's your start key. Um, we're going to go ahead and run this up to 100. And we're actually going to select our color, which would be yellow. Use whatever you like. Uh, yellow, white, blue, doesn't really matter. Whatever, whatever you like, whatever stands out. I always run the size up a little bit. And then I'm going to hit all masks. Okay. Now, as far as that uh, start key, yeah, I had it backwards. Sorry, start at zero. Um, that's it's, it's actually not backwards, but you kind of run it so you can take a look at it. Now you can switch this down to quarter uh, so you can kind of preview it a little bit. So if we set it to zero on the, or the stroke to 100 and then we move forward in the keyframe a little bit and we'll set it to zero, it sets a keyframe. Uh, you can see over here that wherever you created, you see that it tracks it. Now, we'll not do the whole thing. We'll probably just kind of do a preview about here. And I'm on quarter. And while I'm at it, go ahead and uh, just hit save. Uh, we'll go ahead and I'll hit preview. And because mine takes a little bit longer probably than any of yours, I'm going to hit pause while I preview. I'll come back when the preview is ready. Okay, so my preview is ready as far as what I just outlined. We'll go ahead and just kind of play through it, and you'll see how it draws out. And it drops out a little bit there. I don't know why. Uh, let's take a look at it, like right here. So let's go ahead and uh, kick the quality back up. I did not expect this. We'll go back into Mocha. And we'll see what's going on. Okay. So obviously between that tracking key and that tracking key, there's a drop. And see right there it is. So what I'm going to do is actually go to this tracking key and delete it. This tracking key is good. That tracking key is good, but I'm actually going to delete that one as well. Okay. That tracking key is good. So I'm actually going to forward track from that tracking key to the next again. And I'm going to go ahead and pause it. Okay, I'm unpausing in the middle of it because I did see a drop. Where was it? 
Okay, so maybe it corrected itself. Okay, so we'll go ahead and set another tracking key right there. Right here. Then we'll go back between because it was a trouble area just to make sure. We will actually save it again. And now on this layer, we're actually going to go back. I go back ahead of the uh, tracking key. I'll hit the first. And then I'll just go ahead and delete that layer. And then on... Uh, Mocha, I'll go ahead and create that AE mask again, and it should copy it right back with the changes made. Takes a little bit. There we go. So let's come down here to quarter, and we will try to preview it. Okay, so we're back, coming back to it. I can go ahead and play my preview now, and I can see that it starts runs along the pattern, no drop, just fine. Uh, so one thing that I do like to do, let's go ahead and hit U to the drop down. On my uh, start and end path, I do like to uh, easy e the, ease these uh, in and out. And while you're doing that, you may want to go ahead and drag it out for a bit, bit of time, just in the entrance of uh, you know, interest of uh, smoothing it out. So when you're doing the path, it's kind of a slow roll out and a slow roll back in. Okay, now I've got a limited amount of time before I actually have to go back to my real job. So I'm going to go ahead and hit stop right there. We'll save the project. And uh, what I want to do now is uh, duplicate this layer and we're going to create a mask so that we're going behind the buildings. So we'll hit duplicate. Uh, at this point, we're going to get rid of the stroke. Um, we're actually going to go back to, uh, I say the beginning. Um, we're going to hit this uh, mocha again. Oh yeah, we got to go to uh, full screen. We're going to hit mocha again. Now this time, what we're going to do is we're going to actually delete the current layer mask on this this one and we are going to create another layer mask okay but this time we're going to go ahead and actually uh, position the uh, hang on just a second okay we're just going to surround the house for lack of a better word Okay, and we'll get it right here. And anything where we know that the line goes under the house. So like right here on the edge, tighten it up, tighten it up. And you don't really have to go to the roof line, but you kind of want to go that level. Okay, and like I said, you wrap it up, just hitting the, hitting the uh, right click. We'll select all these, hit control A, pull them all out to the extent, then select once. We'll scoot this over. We're actually going to create another one. And on this one, uh, the edge of the barn isn't really an issue. It's uh, this fence edge right here. And let's zoom in to take a look at it. It's this roof line right here. So we want to make sure because the fence line comes down by it. So we're actually going to go ahead and select the whole barn. Just hit right, select them all, control A, pull to the extents. So we know that that uh, barn roof is covered. Zoom out. Okay, we obviously start at the beginning. We want to just kind of make sure that that all flows well. So we're going to go ahead and track this. I'm going to hit you on pause after it starts tracking. Okay, guys. Now, this uh, section actually goes pretty quick. Uh, we're going to go ahead and put a uh, point here. And keep in mind, on this level, what we are doing is all that we are doing is making sure that the house edge, okay, 
is highlighted so that uh, so that if uh, the tracing line comes through it, that it's actually going to uh, hide the line. Okay, so just following this. These don't need to be anywhere close to that side. I think maybe right here though. And let's go up here to the other one. And let's go ahead and zoom into it. I'm just worried about the corners. Anything that the line is going to go behind. So all this stuff right here doesn't really matter. Okay, so we're going to zoom out. And we're going to come here in the middle. I see the lines are actually looking pretty good. Minor fixes. The eve of the house, the barn, that all looks good. So we're going to go here. Uh, Eve barn, everything looks good. Tracking key. Eve barn, everything looks good. Tracking key. Same with here. Eve barn house tracking key, everything looks good. You might want to touch that up just a little bit. Because I know that that is where the line starts coming back into view. Uh, here. Everything looks good. Tracking key here. Everything looks good. Tracking key and here. Everything looks good. Tracking key. We're going to go ahead and save that. Go back into our uh, field and on this one right here, we're actually going to get rid of this layer, the mask path. And on this one right here, under uh, Mac, we're going to actually say apply the mat. Okay, so essentially I'll show you what we're looking at. Okay, if we take the uh, bottom layer off, okay, uh, that is essentially, you know, your, your, uh, okay, let me take that off. That is your mask that we have the stroke effect on. Okay. Um, this is the mask that we're using just for the stroke. Okay, so we're going to add all those together. Hit quarter, come back, and we will go ahead and preview that. And I will let it do its thing. Actually, I'm going to hit pause, let it do its thing, and I'll be back. Okay, guys, so you can see that the line is actually tracing behind the buildings because we added that second mask. All right. We're going to go ahead and let this finish up here real quick. Just a couple more frames. Uh, in the interest of conversation, uh, the second layer that you actually have the mocha and the stroke applied to, you could actually apply a... Uh, drop shadow to the stroke blur it out it does uh make it look a lot nicer a lot cleaner okay but you can see how with this effect uh it isolates uh, let me get over here when we add the uh last mask it actually hides the stroke as far as on the stroke you know you can always go back to it and uh kick up how, you know, what your stroke size is, anything like that. Okay, you can make it as big, as yellow as you want, uh, any color that you want, so no worries there. Guys, I'm sorry this took so long, but uh, that is it in a nutshell. If you have any questions about it, certainly reach out to me, all right? All right.